What's up guys, this is Seville with another NECA Ultimate Real Toys action figure review. Today, I'll be talking about the Armored Assassin Predator from the newest film. It is a deluxe figure, much larger than most NECA Ultimate products, but still maintains the same box type. To aid in your hunt after this review, here is the barcode on the bottom. Plus, I do have a direct link to Amazon in the description below. Now if you can give me just a few more seconds, I'll have this figure out of its box. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment below. And if you want to see more from me, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. And now that the Predator is almost done with this out of the package rotation, we'll get right into the review. The first thing to note about this figure is just how massive it is. The door frame you see in the background is 7 inches tall. It's meant to represent a 112 scale. So if you had a 6 foot character, they'd go through the door. Which is accurate, because he was most definitely huge in the movie. To my knowledge, this is NECA's biggest figure in the 112 scale. Of course, this figure has a lot more going for it than just the size. As usual, NECA's attention to detail is highly incredible. This Predator is referred to as the Armored Assassin because of the scaly and bony aspects to his skin. You can see where he has the protrusions, especially like on his forehead, on the shoulders, and in the hands. There are more of those bumps and things around his torso and down his back, but they're not quite as pointy as the ones on his shoulders and hands. Those, especially, are a bit sharp to the touch. There has clearly been a lot of effort put into the sculpt of this Predator. Adding to that high sense of detail are the gauntlets on his forearms. There's a lot of details on these sculpted and painted practically to perfection. Each side has slots for specific accessories. The right arm uses the blade, which does look pretty awesome once it's put in, and the gauntlet on his left arm is for the cannon. This little piece here comes out of the gauntlet so that the cannon can go in. Once it's in, the cannon does have a couple of little articulation points, which can be adjusted a little bit, but it does make it kind of fragile. I almost wish it was just one solid piece, but overall, it's not bad. The other head sculpt here shows the mouth wide open roar expression, and it's certainly no less detailed than the other. Articulation wise, most of the joints are all pretty tight, and many of which all have certain positions they click into. The head does have some up and down movement, and of course, the full 360 spin. The shoulders do spin all the way around, as well as move backwards. But, the shoulders do have an extra layer of plastic that represents the armor, and it does get caught up in the articulation a little bit. Around the top edge of that shoulder piece, you can kind of see where it's starting to fray a little bit and become discolored and it kind of bends and gets caught underneath the uh, torso area which does hinder a lot of that movement. Moving on to the elbows though, they are double jointed and fold pretty well plus each segment does have independent rotation. The wrists also have full rotation and they do have a hinge underneath for up and down movement. Both torso joints have a small range of back and forth movement which does create a bit of an ab crunch and similar to the elbows, each piece can rotate independently. Moving down to the hips, they do spread out really well, plus have full rotation in those joints. Those joints do have a lot of the clicking positions, but it doesn't hinder their range. They still go pretty far. Of course, he does have the double jointed knees that fold pretty well, but unlike the elbows, it's only the upper joint that has the rotation. And getting down closer to the ankles, he does have the more animalistic legs with the extra joint that has a pretty decent range of motion, and the continued independent rotation per segment, but it does lead to one of my main gripes. It ends up that the pad of the foot is just too small for this figure. While it probably is in scale with the character, the figure is just really top heavy and very difficult to keep balanced. With most figures, while I'm filming, I can move the character the way I need to and then put him back in place and not really fall over that often. But with this one, if I left in all the times this figure fell over, this figure would be twice as long. Right now, He's just barely leaning against the back wall so that he doesn't fall. And a lot of times, especially during the articulation segment, I was holding on to his feet below the camera view. And as big as he is, if he falls over, he's taking over everything you've got near him down with him. Like I said earlier, the Armored Assassin Predator was huge in the movie. So you might be wondering exactly what that translates to as far as the size of the figure. Well, I can tell you for sure, he absolutely towers over the other Predators, especially the Fugitive Predator from the same movie. I already stated earlier that this door frame on my background is about 7 inches high. 
which means the Predator is standing at about 11 inches high, well above the Fugitive and the classic Jungle Hunter Predator. For those who may not have these figures, I'm going to go through several other figures just so you can see where he stands next to the lines you may have. And even though you can't see their feet in the frame because of how tall the Predator is, I promise each character is standing as straight up as they possibly can. The Hasbro White Ranger and the Marvel Legends Spider-Man definitely look tiny compared to him, but Thanos is getting a little bit closer. I knew he'd be big when I saw the original prototype images, but I honestly didn't imagine it being quite this much bigger than the rest of my lines. He even ends up being just a little bit taller than my Storm Collectibles Goro, which up to that point had been my tallest in scale figure that I have. Seeing how similar they are in size kind of makes me wish there'd be a way to see a fight between the two, especially since there was a Predator on the Mortal Kombat X video game. I can definitely imagine it would be an all-out brawl that either character could win, but since this is a Predator video, he's going to be the one taking it this time. So with all that said, it's time to run the Armored Assassin Predator through my guidelines for a complete and fair review. This is a brand new sculpt that is highly detailed and incredibly screen accurate. The Armored Assassin does have more than 20 points of articulation and it is in scale with the other Predator figures. However, the small feet on the very large figure does make it fairly difficult to keep balanced. Back to the positives though, it does come with plenty of accessories and the roughly $45 to $50 price point does seem fair for the size of this figure. For now though, outside of ordering online, finding one at retail might be somewhat difficult. And the problems with some pieces overlapping, bending, and breaking is definitely a quality control issue. But with more positives than negatives, it is still a 7 out of 10 star figure, meaning it is amazing and worth owning for all fans of the character. So even with those few problems, I do still consider it a very worthy figure for my collection. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, and if you like this video, get over here and subscribe to Civilian Collectibles.